Hello, hello, and welcome to my happy place. Um, this morning, what it's morning here anyway. I'm not really sure what time of day it is where you are. But right now, we are in the early morning hours. <laughs> I got a day off, so today is a day of getting things caught up and doing some extra little projects. And one of those little projects is... We're going to talk about using the channel guides, needle guides. They're called a lot of different things. So whatever it is you wish to call them, that's fine by me. <laughs> we are first going to look at, and I'm going to turn it over. Uh, we're going to look at the Freedom Edge 2-inch hearts. And the reason I chose this one to look at is because we have two um, channels, one that goes into the heart up here and one that goes into the connector or flourish down here. So we're going to be switching back and forth a lot. And I want you to see just how easy it is to do. It is definitely not difficult. I'm going to go from left to right. And where I'm going to line, uh, you can see I've got a line drawn in here. And where I'm going to line my template up is where this heart, or this flourish, I'm sorry, and this flourish are exactly on the same horizontal line. So I'm going to line those two flourishes up on my drawn line. Okay, first one. First one's easy. It's really easy because we don't have to worry. We just put our foot down. And of course, the first thing we need to do, which I have not done yet, because I like to show you guys that, uh, yeah, I really do do this. I test my foot and make sure it's exactly where I need it to be. Now, what I did notice with this piece of batting was really kind of strange. Half of it was much thicker than the other half. Don't know why. Not really sure how that happened or why it happened. Okay, so that's the, that's the heavier half up here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fit, test my foot, make sure my stitch integrity is good. Okay, I realize that this is just a practice piece. This actually has no useful value when it's done. <laughs> it's just going to be a piece to show you how it works. But you know what? That's okay. I still want to make sure everything works right because it makes life a lot easier. The other thing, I think it's been a while since I've changed this needle and I really should practice what I preach and change it more often. And that is doing an awful lot of flagging. What do we mean by flagging? What we mean by flagging is when the needle comes up, the fabric comes up with it. And we don't want that to happen, okay? We want that fabric to stay nice and flat. And that occurs with the fact that the presser foot, the ruler foot is at just the right height. So there we go. I did a little bit of adjustment. Perfect. No flagging, no waving, no anything weird going on there. What you see is my tension on top looks really, really good. Let's take a look at the back. Oh, heavens, yes, that is great tension on the back. So let's go ahead and get started on our little sample here, okay? Again, Freedom Edge 2-inch hearts. This is the template 2. Just going to line it up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start and stop thick at the bottom because that's where I'm going to want to be when I move the connector or flourish over. Okay, pull my thread up. We always want to do that. I don't know why, but I always end up with this humongously long piece of thread when I do that. Just a little bit goofy. 
I guess maybe it's just me. I don't think everybody does. Let me know if you have that same problem, okay? I'd like to know I'm not the only one in the world who does that. Okay, lining up my template. I'm going to take my one stitch in place. Any of you who have seen my videos before know that I like to take that one stitch in place to avoid toe catchers. Toe catchers is what I'm most famous for. <laughs> okay, well, maybe not famous. I'm not famous in any way, but if it were, it would be for toe catchers. Okay, make sure you don't do what I just did and take your hands off your template when your needle is up. You want to make sure that needle stays down. Okay, so there we are. I am at the bottom of my heart. So as you can see, I have my needle down. I am now just going to lift my presser foot. I'm going to move my template out through the needle channel and put it back in through the needle channel. And really, it is that easy. It really is. So now I'm going to go ahead and line myself up again. And got everything where I need it to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that first stitch in place. With this particular template, you don't have to be overly concerned with, um, with making sure you stick on one side or the other of, of the template because that... Um, that channel is just the right size for us. And I just realized that I am using a template without stable tape. <laughs> we don't want to do that. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, again, I'm just going to lift my foot up and take that template out. I'm going to replace it with one with stable tape this time. Makes it things a lot easier. Okay, so I have stable tape on both sides of this particular template because we are going to be flipping it. I'm going to get that thread out of there. Okay, um, now I have just put my flourish or my connector in. So what I want to do is I want to put my heart in upside down this time. And this is why we have our stable tape on both sides. Okay, so I love this template for this reason. I know this is not a tutorial about the Freedom Edge 2 Inch Hearts number two template, but you know what? As long as we're here, <laughs> I'm gonna give you all the ins and outs of this particular template because I really love this template. I feel totally honored that I was allowed to do the launch on this template and we came up with some awesome designs with it and I know there's so much more to do with it. So what I want you to see is lining this up. We have the etched line here to make sure that you're lined up. Again, where this particular um, area, this particular edge line crosses the center line. It's exactly where I want to be. So now it's going to go a lot easier with stable tape on it. And I am going to, again, going to just take, whoa, hello. I need to, uh, I need to adjust that foot. Unfortunately, like I said, this is just a really strange, strange piece of batting that is like all over the place. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to knock you, the camera into oblivion here. Hopefully didn't make anybody seasick. And there we go. We just want the top of that foot to kiss the top of the fabric. Okay, so I'm all lined up again and we're going to go ahead and make our heart. Again, taking that one stitch in place. And what you're gonna see when I come by the uh, needle channel right here, there is just a tiny, tiny bit of play in that template. So what I like to do is I like to put my 
fingers down on it. I'm going to pull you in real close here to show you what I'm talking about. Right here, I just like to put my fingers down and make sure that it stays nice and stable, which it will. If you don't have your fingers on it, is it going to make a difference? Probably not. Um, I just do it because I'm a suspenders and belt kind of girl. I like being very, very cautious. Okay, so I'm going to make sure my finger is there. And we're going to get going again. Now, I want you to know, too, that I am sewing on a 1950s vintage machine, so I don't have all the fun bells and whistles of having the luxury of a needle-up, needle-down position, things like that. I wish I did sometimes, but, you know, this is just my favorite machine. It used to be my husband's. Yes, I stole it from him. Yes, he had to go buy another one. <laughs> Okay, I'm very fortunate. My husband quilts as well as I do, so he really has a good, good handle on what we deal with. Okay, so in order to line this heart up, okay, to go in the right direction, it, it, you need to play with this. You definitely need to play with it. So I'm not going to worry about that right now because really we don't need to worry. As long as we have this lined up, we're fine. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead, put my connector back on. And like I said, Putting in and out is really that easy. I forget to talk about it just simply because it is that easy. It's um, it, it's not intrusive at all. Okay, here we go. I got some flagging going on here, so I definitely want to put that foot down just a hair. There we go. Ah, perfect. And. We're going to come back down to the bottom. Now we are going to go ahead and we're going to take this template off. I am lifting my foot. A lot of the new machines have what's called a, an automatic lift, I guess it, it's called, where it just lifts up a little bit so that you can turn your fabric at corners, etc. And I think a lot of those machines, that's just enough to slip this template in and out, which is awesome. I don't mind having to do those things manually. Maybe because I'm as old as a machine. Maybe, you know, maybe older. I hope not. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to line myself back up and I'm going to make my next heart. Come on. The disadvantage is to not having an automatic machine. Sometimes you've got to coax it along a little bit. Okay, so now what you'll notice is back here, I don't put my finger back here. I don't know why. I just don't. I'm really trying to be very aware of where things are, especially where my hands are as we're going through this, as I'm showing you how to use these needle channels, which I think are awesome. What is super great about them is you don't have to worry about lost gates or puzzle pieces. So now I'm going to flip myself up again because I want my connector to go in an upright direction and line it all back up, which it does so easily. And here we go back up again. I like the fact that you don't have to worry about making sure you're riding one side or the other of the channel because the way that it's designed, it really just smoothly runs through it. Okay, back out. And I'm going to put my heart in up right side up this time. Oh no, upside down. Okay, sorry about that. I almost got it in the wrong direction. We don't want that, do we? Okay, so this will be the last one that I'll do for you. And again, I want you to notice my right thumb is in fact holding where that needle channel is. 
I am going to take it off just so you can see. It's not necessary. It's just the way I do it. I will tell you, if it's a larger template, you really would want to do that because the larger templates may have a little bit more play in them than this smaller template. And there we go. I've got it done. Take my template off and you'll see how easy that is to work. Okay. Now I'm just going to show you one more little thing here. And that's again with the heart, the connecting hearts templates. And this is the newest template. This one, we only need a stable tape on one side. We have some lines here running horizontal so that we can make our designs any way we want. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put it here. I am going to start at my bottom left on this particular one, the lining Whoa, I'm sorry again, I knocked in there. I don't mean to do that. Um, if you look up Klutz in the dictionary, I'm sure you're gonna find my name there. <laughs> okay, awesome. And there we go with that long string again. Remember, let me know if you do that too. I really wanna know I'm not the only one in the world who does. Okay, there, need to. Um, just adjust that for a little bit because here I can feel that the um, batting is just getting a little thinner. Okay, like to hold those threads back so we don't end up with a thread nest underneath. You saw how easily that went in. And I'm doing this because I want you to see just how easily we're going to go past that needle channel up here, okay? And there we go. I love this heart, I love the, the softness of it. Okay, get rid of my thread there so I can move my hands a little bit. And down we're gonna go. When you have a really sharp corner, like what I'm going through right now, I like to slow down a lot, <laughs> okay? Um, I think that it helps us keep those stitches a little more even. Okay, so now with this particular template, I can either just go from the left to the right, or I can make it a really deep design by flipping it backwards, flipping it towards myself, and now I'm going to come in this direction. There we go, around that curve. And if I had slowed down a little more, I would not have left that one little bit larger stitch. You'll see I'm not moving my hands to make sure that I'm on that needle channel and the foot just slides right by it like butter. Easy, easy, easy to go. Okay, here we go around that peak again, slowing myself down just a little bit. And we're going to come back to the end of the template and stop there. Okay, we'll do one more rotation for you. And lining my line up one more time. And it goes around that corner. Look at that one turned out awesome. I think it's the best one I did so far this morning. Of course, I am starting off cold, and it is cold up here in the Upper Peninsula today. I know that a lot of you are enjoying spring, and I envy you that. Um, we could go today. We had a 21-inch snowfall, so we're just patiently waiting for that snow to go away. <laughs> it may not be till next week, but it will go away. Not to fear. Spring is close by. Okay, so again, lift my foot up, slide it out, 
and that's how easy it is. I love this. I love the needle channels. I love the fact I don't have to worry about tape falling off and my, um, my gates getting lost. I was so happy when I tried the first one. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't too sure how I was going to like them, but now, Oh my goodness, I hope they're all made that way. So those of you who are fortunate enough to be getting new templates and having that new needle channel as opposed to the gates, bravo. I'm happy for you guys. I really, really am because I just think it's an easier method of doing it. And for those of us who don't, well, as we get new ones, we'll get those gates instead of having the, um, or we'll get those needle channels instead of having the gates. And everything is good. I hope that this tutorial, this little tutorial, quick as it is, is helpful to showing you how to get in and out. Again, I'm just going to put my foot down. I'm going to put my needle down just a little bit, lift my foot, in it goes. If you have the automatic lift or a knee lift, this is a great place to use a knee lift. That's how easy it is to get them in and out. And I'm working on a totally totally mechanical machine. So I, I, if I can find it easy to do on this, I know that you guys will have an easier time on your new fancy machines as well. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I love giving you content that you ask for or want. So please keep posting what it is you want to see us doing and we'll be sure to, um, to make the content that you like. Also, let us know how we're doing by going to the instructors page, leaving us a comment. If you find these little tips and tricks helpful, I appreciate that so much. Love hearing from you. Love to see pictures, post pictures. Uh, let me know what you're doing. And until we meet again, let's quilt.